the, the tradition of Italian cooking, there is also an academy of Italian cooking. The, the stricter are uh, the, the Tuscans, the people from Tuscany, like Florence and around, both linguistically and also uh, cooking-wise. Uh, bread should be made only of uh, uh, wheat and salt and water and nothing else, a bit of olive oil if you want, but no preservatives, no milk, nothing like that. The simplest is the best. Let's say that they are transparent enough. <laughs> and at this point, we add the meat. We add it if you use the tomato sauce before the tomato sauce. So that you can like uh, roast a bit in the, in the juice of the vegetables. Another thing, the basque will be having a, like a, a cup that doesn't stick. And uh, actually a wooden, uh, a wooden uh, yeah, spoon with the basque. If you are in a hurry and you want a good pasta, you don't have the time to prepare the sauce, you just uh, make the pasta boil and then uh, when it's a bit hard, you take it away, like you sieve it, you put, <coughs> you put it back in the pan with a bit of olive oil, uh, minced garlic and uh, chili. After two minutes that it's been roasting, it's really tasty and like very simple. Uh, so, in Italy, you would find a different kind of uh, pesto genovese on the menu or just one? Wow. It's, it's the pesto genovese we mm. We'll start actually with the, with the pesto. So the best way of doing it would be in a marble, uh, um, I don't know what you call it exactly, in Italian it's called mortaio, and it's a, it's a special bowl, mortar maybe. Mortar, it sounded to me a bit military, so I didn't want to do that. <laughs> but anyway, this is the uh, mortar, and uh, uh, the best thing would be having it in marble, or in, in a, some kind of stone, because it doesn't absorb, whereas the, the, the wood sometimes absorbs. The pestle can be marble or can be wooden um, without any problems. So you should get fresh garlic. Give it a cut, but don't bother too much about cutting it thinly. You put it inside. And um, as I brought, usually the quantity is one clove of garlic every 30 leaves of the basil. So we're going to do two cloves of garlic, I think it's enough. And the basket should be fresh. I know that it's a problem to get it in egg, it's not so easy, but um, I found it all right in Zamale. Two. Basil and uh, pine seeds, snooper. Yeah. So about, about this. And then you can vary the, the quantity. So this is the before the, the preparation starts and uh, the movement should be not like <laughs> like a kid but a bit like uh, rotating the whole thing so this is why sometimes having a marble a marble uh, thing helps because usually the marble ones have like a, a round uh, shape so you can turn around pretty easily whereas this one is a bit difficult because things go in the corners. Well, if you want to know about something more about uh, like what's on the news in Italy, there is this um, Italian newspaper, it's the only one and the first one at the moment that has got a, an English version. And the name of the newspaper is Corriere della Sera, it's the main um, and uh, mm, on, in the Italian version, there is like a, a sort of a weblog in which an Italian journalist that has worked uh, as a correspondent from abroad for decades um, hosts some kind of letters from the Italians, so the Italian, Italian people living abroad. And uh, there was a, a debate some weeks ago about uh, tagliatella, like uh, fettuccine alfredo, which is also a pretty common uh, Italian 
so called Italian recipe that you find really in every restaurant, uh, Italian restaurant abroad, but nobody in Italy knows what the cappuccino and the are. So they were trying to find out what is the recipe of the Petuccini Alfredo and what is the origin of the name. So like, they came out with different versions and everyone was claiming, I knew the original Alfredo restaurant, they invented it. And it was the restaurant where Audrey Hepburn used to go or like something like this. So the result of the inquiry was that there is no such a thing like the Petuccini Alfredo. And if you just want to prefer pasta, whatever you want inside, you can just call it Petuccini Alfredo and it works well. <laughs> Also, I remember like uh, in England there was a, a restaurant and it was uh, an Italian restaurant and uh, the cook used to follow like strictly the recipe. Like I would say, not if Polonese is written like Polonese must be done this way. But actually, like uh, if you used to eat pasta every day as Italians do, like at a certain point you do pasta with whatever you have. So that, you know, if you, what you find in the fridge, what you put, you know, you know, you put the, when you are at home, you can do the pasta with whatever you have, actually. Uh, the only thing is that, of course, it's not a bolognese or it's not a pesto, it's something different. And you can call it uh, a favorite, you can call it uh, El Mohamed, uh, El Mohamed, or whatever. Martina, do you want to come and uh, <laughs> I check the honor? Let's, <laughs> gen let's genderize our classes. Yeah. I don't know if I have to feel miserable in uh, doing this kind of thing, but, you know, it's kind of futuristic uh, <laughs> <laughs> relation to a woman. But I don't know, like, uh, there are many, like, men who love to, who love to cook. I don't, personally. <laughs> but, like, uh, this is kind of mechanical. I don't have, like, much to do, and I think, uh, Yeah, you can make money down with this, okay. Uh, because in, like in Egypt, it's kind of uh, hard for a man to cook, isn't it? Yeah, no. No? no. Did you have objective to man going here? <laughs> no. <laughs> my brother loves to cook, and my father. He doesn't love to cook. Okay. And my brothers. I think right. men only cook for money. If it doesn't involve money, they don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Most folks are. Yeah, but that is. Yeah, that is. I was waiting for a man to say that because I was not a credible source as a woman. <laughs> but I think it's true, maybe there is some kind of marketing ideas like that. No, no, but no, sorry, let me say something. Yeah. If I have to trust the receipt, I trust the grandmother's receipt. Not, not the grandfather. <laughs> Also, the cookbooks books and you just don't get by all. Oh, see. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, so. It's a more of a cultural thing in Egypt that men don't cook. Uh, maybe they think it's, it makes them less of a thing. Well, usually they don't have fun. But, uh, no, even if they don't cook, they don't have fun. Yeah, that's the point. They, they don't even have the work. They don't have the work. They don't dream about a husband that will uh, prepare to eat something. Easy. 